As a designer, you will at some stage need to make some changes to a 3D model. When a model's design intent has been redefined, it is important you understand how a model was created, and then you can identify which features to edit in the Feature Manager tree. In this lesson, you will learn how to use the rollback bar to see how a model was created, and I will also explain a concept called parent-child relationships. To finish, you will learn how to use a variety of editing tools in SOLIDWORKS to make changes to features, sketches, and sketch planes. Just a quick reminder, if you want any of the part files from this lesson, you can check that in the description. There will be two files. One is the beginning file, which is the one you see on screen now. So you can use this to follow along with the lesson. The second part file is the completed part file from the end of the lesson. So in case you want to just check how it should look at the end with all the changes we make, you can take a look at that one as well. Both of these files are for SOLIDWORKS 2019 version, so you'll need 2019 or higher to be able to actually open the files. Before we begin, it's important to understand how a part file was made in SOLIDWORKS. This will allow you to identify whether you need to edit features or sketch profiles whenever you need to make a change to the geometry. One way of doing this is to use the rollback bar in the Feature Manager tree. The rollback bar is this blue line in the Feature Manager tree on the left, and it allows you to go back in history through the part file. What it's effectively doing is suppressing any of the features afterwards, and so as you move the bar higher, you're going to an earlier and earlier state of the design process for that part. To give you an example, if we roll this bar by clicking and holding and then dragging it all the way to the top between the first boss extrude and the fillet and let go, you'll see that it's taken us back to the very first extrusion of the part. This was the very first feature of the part, and if we expand that, we can also see the sketch that was used to create the feature. Later in the lesson, we will need to edit this 2D profile as we're going to want the arc to be in tangent to the top face of this part. If we move the rollback bar forward to the fillet, we can then reactivate the fillet feature, and you can see that the fillet has been applied to these two top edges of the part. So as you can see, the rollback bar is suppressing any features afterwards, and it's giving us a feature by feature or a step by step process on how this part is being created. If we then move the rollback bar to the next one, to the boss extrude, we can see that it's been used to create this circular tab on the side of the part body. Again, taking another step forward, a mirror feature is then used to create the circular tab on the other side of the part. Next, the shell feature has been used to hollow out the part as well as adding holes through these circular tabs on the side. The shell feature works by removing material up to the thickness you specify and also any faces that you select on the part. This means that because the circular cutouts have been produced using the shell feature, it means that those cutouts are directly tied to the shell feature. Later in the lesson, we will want to decrease the size of that hole, which means we're going to have to edit the shell feature to be able to change it. Moving along to the final feature is the cut extrude, which has added a simple hole cut through the side of the part. In this lesson, we will want to remove these holes completely, but we'll be able to reuse them in the circular tabs on the side later. This will require us to move the sketch plane and edit the sketch profile. Now that we understand how the part was created and what features need to be changed, we can now go ahead and modify the geometry. As we already have a shell feature, we want to first rearrange this order so that it comes directly after the fillet. This will remove the holes from the circular tab so they're no longer directly related to the shell feature. To do this, we can click and hold and drag the feature up and down the Feature Manager tree. You may notice that it prevents us from moving it any higher, and this is because of parent-child dependencies that exist in the features. This currently makes it impossible for the shell feature to exist before any other features. A parent feature is an existing feature that other features depend upon in order to be defined. A child feature is an existing feature that depends on a parent feature. In this case, the shell feature is the child, which references the side faces of the circular tabs, which makes the boss extrude feature the parent. We can also check the parent-child relations by right-clicking on the feature and going to parent-child. In the window that is displayed, we can see that the shell feature has three parent features that are tied to it, a mirror feature and two boss extrude features. This means that the shell feature cannot exist without the base shape and the two circular tabs. If we want to reorder the shell feature, we are going to have to remove the dependency on these circular tabs. 
We can do this by editing the shell feature. So if you click on shell and go to edit feature, we want to remove the dependency on these two circular tabs, which is being caused by using the face of those tabs. So we can just click on those two faces to remove them from the shell list and click OK. We can see that the shell has been modified to still cut out the internal, but we no longer have a full cut through the circular tabs and therefore removes the dependency on it. If we again right click on the shell feature and go to parent child, we can see that now only the boss extrude is the parent of this shell feature, which allows us to now reorder the shell feature to just after the fillet feature. So now the shell feature only affects the base shape and the holes we can add back in later on in the lesson. The next modification we will want to adjust is the contour of the back face so that it is tangent with the curved face, which will make the fillet run all the way to the end. We know that the sketch profile of the first extrusion is what drives this shape, and so we need to modify the sketch to make the change. We do this by clicking on the boss extrude and going to edit sketch. Here we can see the curve in the top line come to a sharp corner. And because this sketch is fully defined, we are going to have to remove something to allow some movement back into the sketch. We want to keep this three degree angle and we want to make this arc tangent to it. So what we can do is right click on this radius dimension and delete it, which will give us some control back. While holding control on your keyboard, click the arc and this top line and then make it make tangent. Click OK to accept the change and then exit the sketch. If we go back into an isometric view, you'll no now notice that it is staying in a tangent relationship and curving down nice and smooth. But why was this fillet feature automatically applied all the way to the end? Well, if we take a look at the fillet feature, we will be able to see why. If we edit the fillet feature by clicking on it and going to edit feature, you'll notice that the tangent propagation is checked. What this does is add fillets to all edges tangent to the edge selected originally. The last modification we want to make is to remove these holes in the side of the part. And we may as well reuse it and relocate it to the circular tabs on the side. So again, by clicking on the feature, we can go to the feature and click on edit sketch. We want this circle to be concentric with the circular tab. So we can do that by clicking on the circle, clicking on this edge and then going to concentric. This will make sure that these two circles always align centrally with each other. Clicking OK and exiting the sketch. If we go back to our isometric view, you may wonder why nothing has changed. But if you turn it around, you'll actually see there is a cut on the insides of the part. So what's going on here. Well, if we go back to our feature and edit it, we will see that it just has a blind extrusion of 60 mils, and that is going from the original face, which was this outside face. So really it's only cutting away from the inside edges, but there is still too much material on the outside with these circular tabs. We can change this by moving the position of the 2D profile to be on the outside of the tab and then cutting all the way through. So to change the position of the sketch profile, you can expand the feature, click on the sketch and go to edit sketch plane. Here you'll see what is currently the sketch plane and click on a new face, which we want to be this outside face of the cylindrical tab. Click OK and you can see it now has updated and it is now cutting, but it's not cutting all the way through. So the final modification we need to make is to the cut feature, clicking on it, going to edit feature. And instead of using a blind, we can just use a through all end condition. So we'll change it to that and click OK. And we can see our hole is cut all the way through the part. So this is how you would take a part file and look through the history of it to see how it was created. This is useful when, say for instance, someone sent you a part file and they want you to make a change. You can go through the history of the part and see what features were used in what order to create that part. And then you'll be able to identify which features and which sketch profiles need to be changed to edit the geometry in the way you need it. So that ends this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.